WBBZ TV is on the air with the Robert Wood Show with Buffalo Bills wide receiver Robert Woods. Hi, I'm Dave Jixer from 97 Rock. Big changes at the top with one more game to go. We will break it all down. I'm Sarah O'Brien from 1033 The Edge. Social media is trending with all things Bills. I'll be taking your comments and tweets on the football fans' favorite show. The Robert Wood Show on WBBC TV is presented by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Mighty Taco, do the cue. Mighty Taco's new quesadilla styled burritos. And DeGraff Hospital, because we see people, not just patients. And now from the WBBC TV studio from 97 Rock, here's co-host Dave Jixter. Welcome to the Robert Woods Show. I'm so happy to have Robert Woods back here in the chair. Robert, uh, a lot of breaking news. First of all, a heartbreaking loss uh, against the Miami Dolphins and knocked you guys out of the playoffs. But yeah. more importantly, about noontime today, it came across the wire that uh, head coach Rex Ryan and his brother Rob are no longer coaching the Buffalo Bills. And tell us where you were and how that all went down. Yeah, big, big changes uh, today, you know, all across the building. You know, first one was... Uh, the breaking news of, of Rex Ryan being fired and Rob as well. Um, just, uh, it's crazy, you know, you just, just sitting around, I mean, you hear speculations uh, throughout the weeks, and then um, and you, and you get a text, you know, you get a text, you know, today's our off day, you get a text, uh, you know, being informed of, of what's going on, um, but it's still same mindset, you know, business as usual. Uh, Got to try and get a win uh, against the Jets, but, uh, I mean, hearing, hearing the news, it was breaking news, uh, and just seeing it all over social media, um, you know, seeing, seeing Rex's face everywhere. Were, was anybody shocked or upset by the deal or glad? I mean, did you talk to any of your teammates? Yeah, I, I was actually, actually uh, pretty shocked, just, just because it was, you know, one, one game left. I know, um, you know, been hearing, you know, he had a, a couple prove-it games, and, and we fell short tough losses uh, in, in big rushing games. Uh, I know this this past game we were able to come back with a almost a comeback win. You know, offense came back and came through. Down a couple uh, touchdowns. Yeah, came through in the end. Big plays by Charles Clay to get us in the game, but uh, you know, end up falling short at the end. But um, it, it's it's just tough because uh, you know, I mean, he's our coach, he's our leader, he's our defensive guy, and uh, and we fell short. So I mean, we, we put it on, it's a little bit of both. You know, put on the players, put on the coach, but. Um, both, both, uh, you hear both ways from players. You hear both sides. You know, some players are, are glad. Some players are, are you know, don't like the decision. And some players, you know, are not really caring. So you're hearing a little bit of everything, but just trying to finish out the season and get a win in for the city. You know, it's uh, against Miami. It's fourth down, uh, two yards to go. The offense is moving the ball pretty well. The guys decide to punt it. Yeah. And then a uh, big run by Miami, puts them in field goal range. Uh, find, come to find out there was only 10 defensive guys on the field. Mm -hmm. I mean, how, how do things like that happen in, in today's NFL? Uh, it's, it's, it's tough. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's bad football, you know, at, at the end of the day. Um, you know, you, you got to be, be prepared for every situation. Got to have 11 guys on the field. It was tough because of the situation with Stephon Gilmore um, being injured on a play earlier. But that's all awareness. Situation of football, critical situation, uh, cost us a big play and end up costing us game and ultimately costing us the playoffs. Do you think Rex will reach out? I know he was a player's coach. Do you think right. he'll reach out to any of you guys? Uh, I, I hope so. You know, just being hearing from it uh, through text uh, is, is a little is a little rough. But I guess uh, it is how it is. The business part, you know, rather you know keep keep things going, keep things flowing instead of guys, you know, being emotional about it. You know, speaking speaking to them, not speaking to them. But uh, it's just uh, just. You know, hopefully, hopefully somehow hear from him because, uh, I mean, it was a great time, great coach, uh, great experience with him. Interim head coach Anthony Lynn, he took yeah. over uh, the offensive coordinator job. He's been in the league for like 17 years, mostly yeah. a running backs coach. He was a uh, assistant head coach and running backs coach for Rex in 2012. Right. But since he took over, the offense really hasn't played that bad. You're 12th in yards gained mm -hmm. in the National Football League. You're 7th in points scored in the National Football League. You're first in rushing, which is huge. Yeah. But here's, here's, the, here's the, the stat that, that, that kills Buffalo, is you're 31st in passing. 
Right. You know, the main focus uh, we always speak on is is how to how to pick up our passing, how to pick up our passing game, whether it's uh, being being more open, um, catching the ball, you know, pass defensively. We always are trying to pick up and establish ways to, you know, get our passing game more involved. We we know the running game has been established, been been there uh, with Hassan, with Richie up front, you know, Eric Wood as well. Um, just trying to get this passing game going, and you see with the scoring, you see with the rushing attempts, you see with the rushing yards, how it's all coming through. And now, if we pick up this passing game as long with it, um, you know, this offense could be v very, very dangerous because we missed out on so many opportunities uh, in the passing game, uh, which means you know even more scoring, more points. Yeah, seventh in points scored. So basically, with that stat, it kind of goes back to show you that the defense. Mm. really hurt this team this year and, and they certainly did this past game and the game before that. Yeah, we tried to at the beginning of the season we tried to build this team and, and foundation on on our running game and our and our uh, and our defense. Uh, you know, th we, we came into this into the season, you know, expecting to have our, our, our solid defense and offense pretty much, you know, put up enough points to get the win and have the defense come through for us. But you know things things turned around, you know, our, our offense been putting up points and uh, kind of trying to you know, save our defense at, at times, you know. But uh, it, it's just still trying to play complete football, you know. Some of the years since I've been here, our offense has been struggling. Our defense has been great. You know, this year our offense has been, been a whole lot better. I wouldn't say it's great, but I was saying a whole lot better and performing um, a lot better. But, uh, you know, this, this time our defense is falling short. So we still got to find ways to complete, complete this team. You know, special team has been there, offense has been there, and defense has been up and down as well there. But we need to find a way to play consistently on all phases of the ball. How tight are you with E.J. Manuel? Uh, very tight with him. Came in with him, uh, drafted with him. Um, first person I text when I actually got drafted. But, uh, you know, hearing, hearing some changes may be coming around uh, and, and see, see what's going on this yeah, Sunday. Because you'll be the starting quarterback see, this yeah, Sunday. Yeah, E.J. May, may be the starting quarterback this Sunday uh, against the Jets. So, all right, listen, we're going to take a short break, and then when we come back, we are going to head to the Digital Zone with Sarah O'Brien from 103.3 The Edge. We will be right back. Welcome back to the Robert Woods Show. I'm Dave Jixon from Nice and Iraq and Mr. Robert Woods. And Robert, we talked about Anthony Lynn and how he took over um, uh, the job from being a running backs coach to the offensive coordinator. And, and, and how much did things actually change? I know the offense basically moved the ball better and right. better play calling. But for you, how much did the offense change? I think uh, the biggest thing was just more trying to get more guys utilized. You see, uh, just involving more plays, more packages. Uh, with, when Percy was in, Percy was getting some plays. Justin is getting some plays. Brandon Tate has some plays. Marquise Goodwin has more plays. You just see uh, a lot more guys being involved, uh, just touching the ball, trying to you know keep the defense on edge. Who's getting the ball? But I would say the biggest thing that would be the biggest thing is just spreading the ball around and allowing our guys to to utilize what they do best work like shady maybe outside zone myself maybe a quick passing game charles clay over the middle sammy and marquise deep you know just trying to utilize guys and their best ability i think that may be the biggest thing in transition since he got in and then this week i'm expecting you to get the ball a lot more because you know ej is your guy <laughs> right uh, yeah ej ej is my guy ej uh he, he does throw the ball um we'll, we'll see you know i haven't I haven't seen him back there in a while in the game but I'm, I'm very excited for him. Uh, big chance, big opportunity for him. You know he's been preparing for this day, uh, and he finally got a shot. So hopefully, let's go out there and dominate and put it all on the field. All right, Robert. Lots yeah. to talk about on social media. Lots. Let's check in with Sarah O'Brien from 1033 The Edge in the Digital Zone. Is brought to you by DeGraff Memorial Hospital, where we see people, not just patients. Lots to talk about, Sarah. Yes, we do, Dave. Thanks. Welcome to the Digital Zone. Our Facebook has been buzzing. And make sure you're getting all your comments, questions, thoughts, and opinions at WBBZ TV. You can also find us on Twitter at Robert Wood Show and at WBBZ. Uh, you're getting a lot of love on our Facebook saying that they hope that you get resigned, but they're also talking a lot about Rex. Um, some people are saying it's not all Rex's fault that we should be looking more at the team. And then some other people are saying that we should take a look at other people who are a part of the team, like Doug Whaley, saying that he may have stacked a top-heavy roster. Lots of action going on there, so you can get in your opinions right there. But let's jump right in. 
We have some uh, questions coming from BuffaloBills.com. Uh, Post-game interview, LaShawn McCoy is talking about the Dolphins game, saying that he felt it was a waste. He said he felt unsatisfied with it, but he also set some personal records. So do you think, just for yourself, that the recent loss might overshadow any accomplishments that you may have had this season? Yeah, I mean, our, our main goal uh, is, is get to the playoffs, get to the playoffs. Um, I mean, for me, it, it's always tough because we always play out these scenarios, you know, this team has to lose, this team has to win. But we, we never went out, we never do our part. You know, the biggest thing, uh, like, like Shady said, I mean, we got, a, like, he got the records, a few records, Tyrod got some franchise records. But, I mean, the whole goal is to win the game. We got to win and find ways to get to the postseason and find ways to win, uh, win these games. So I, it's tough to say it's, it's, a, it's a loss, but, I mean, it definitely does hurt. And, uh, it could could be a waste. The whole goal is to get to the postseason. I mean, it's great to have a great personal game, personal achievement, showcase yourself a little bit. Right. But you guys still want to win. You still want to get to the playoffs. You're a team, and and that's, that's yeah. I mean, you do your part, but I mean, you know, it's not the you know the Buffalo Shadies, the Buffalo Lashans, or the Buffalo Tower. It's the Buffalo Bills, and we're all repping and wearing the same name. We're all still going out, going back home in off season, still you know repping the Bills, and we're watching postseason uh, just like them. Which is, which is not that cool. You know, we want to be playing the games, being in all the action, being in the postseason, the real, the real games, the real football games. Sarah? Yeah, we're heading over to Fox Sports now. You guys had talked about earlier that Anthony Lynn's going to be stepping in as an interim head coach. So I want to know, what are some of the strengths that you see coming from him? And what are some of the things that you're looking forward to seeing from him in this interim position? Yeah, one of the things I would say is uh, just seeing the transition from him, from an offense, a running backs coach to an offensive coordinator. Which we touched base on. Yeah, just how he how he came in the meeting, just uh, demanded the team, and, and he spoke to the team, you know, we're going to get this guy involved, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. So those type of things, but he's also um, uh, more disciplined. You guys better be in meetings, you know, five minutes early, uh, and we're starting five minutes early. You know more more disciplined than Rex? Yeah, a little bit more, more disciplined than Rex. Just uh, Rex is laid back, you know, handle your business. Um, you know, you handle your business on the field, you, you show up, you know, everything's all, all good. But, uh, you know, a Lynn is more so, you know, you're going to handle your business. Uh, you're going to, we're going to do this extra, we're going to do this, we're going to do all this extra work. Um, and, and at the end of the day, it's whatever it takes to win, you know. You still got to perform on the field, you know, it all sounds good, but Sundays, Sundays, you got to win. What happens if you're five minutes late for a meeting when Rex was head coach? I mean, you're still early, you're still five minutes early, but it's just the whole principle was like, if, you, if we're starting at 9 o'clock, you should be in your seat around 8.55, you know, getting prepared for the 9 o'clock meeting. You should not be walking in around 8.59, you know, trying to get ready and, 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 and take notes. You know, you want to be a little bit early, just be prepared in those ways. I was just digging there to see if there was any dirt yeah, on yeah, yeah. <laughs> No, no, no dirt on Rex, no okay. dirt on Rex. <laughs> Taking a closer look at an article from Pro Football Talk, one of your teammates, Marcel Darius, is talking about there was too much detail in Rex's defense. He said it was kind of hard to play to his scheme. So did you observe any of your teammates having difficulty following that, or do you think that they kind of flow with it pretty well? Uh, just, just both ways. You know, hearing, hearing some things, some, some weeks are more complicated, some weeks are more simple. It all depends on our opponent and what, what the offense does. But, I mean, sometimes on the field, I mean, we often see – Usually on touchdowns, of course, the big plays, you see guys, you know, saying, point out this, point out that. So which, which, which that means is there's usually some type of communication or some, some, something that is they are lacking somehow. But uh, we heard that before. We heard right. last season the defense was too complicated. Then Rex actually simplified it and, right. and it improved. And now we're hearing that again. It's right. Same, same thing as well. Um, I mean, you, I mean, you can see the differences with the, with our offenses. How we said when we simplify things for offense, we progress. So we we can see how our defense could do and see if it makes any changes in the future. And that's all the time I have for you guys in the digital zone today. Back to you, Dave. Thank you so much, Sarah. Nice job over there, Sarah. From 1033 The Edge, the digital zone is brought to you by DeGraff Memorial Hospital, where we see people, not just patients. Next, Robert Woods will connect with our studio audience. We'll be right back. Connect with Robert with the Mighty Q Questions of the Week. Mighty Taco's new Quesadilla Grill Press Style Burritos are available now at Mighty Taco. Chicken, steak, or just say cheese. The Mighty Q is the perfect way to do the Q.
And welcome back. It's time to connect with Robert in our studio audience and it's brought to you by Muddy Taco where you can do the queue. Robert, take it away. Thanks, Dave. Welcome to the show. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Dave from Lancaster okay. and I know this just happened this morning and so I don't mean to put you on a spot, but okay. who do you think will be the Bills next head coach? Yeah, I, I know right now, you know, uh, A-Land is filling in right now. Uh, I've been hearing a couple rumors, uh, um, you know, outside coaches, A-Land as well. But I, I'm uncertain and don't really know who's going to come in. A bunch of rumors as of now. Um, some truth will come out soon, uh, close to next year. Thank you. What's your name and what's your question? My name is Jamie. And my question is, if you could have done one thing different during last week's game versus the Dolphins, what would it be? And what do you feel you can do to improve as a player? Uh, this game, I probably would have probably gave a little bit more effort. Apparently, you know, it wasn't enough. Somehow we ended up falling short, um, whether it's uh, just motivation um, to other players, motivation um, to offense to keep going, uh, start on early. Uh, we were down 14 nothing, so probably something early on in the game just to get the offense and get us sparked up. Welcome back. What's your name and what's your question? Hey, I'm Zach, and uh, Robert, I want to know what was your favorite Christmas gift you got Sunday? Yeah, my favorite Christmas gift uh, this Sunday may have been, uh, uh, let's see, may maybe this jacket right here. My mom, <laughs> my mom got me this nice jacket for Christmas, uh, so I've been wearing it, yeah. It's pretty cool. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks, Dave. All right. Nice job, Robert. Nice job, studio audience. Remi uh, reminder, our final Robert Wood show is Monday, January 2nd at 7 p.m. And you can get reservations to be in our studio audience if you log on to WBBZ.TV. It's really a great time. And Robert using, usually signs a few autographs after the show. Next, we will play the Hot Shot Football Challenge. We will be right back. <laughs> The Hot Shot Football Challenge is brought to you by Gelber and O'Connell, your car accident and injury law firm. Call 633-5050. Welcome back to Hot Shot Football Challenge. It's sponsored by Gelber and O'Connell, and we have Robert here, and we have, uh, what's your name? David. Dave, where are you from? Lancaster. All right, buddy, your first time on TV. Robert just asked you off the air. <laughs> yeah. A little nervous? Yeah. All right, don't be nervous. Go right up there you and throw, arm. playing for a arm. gift card to the Roadhouse Grill. You've got an arm. Oh, oh I, told you. I told you. Look at that. Job, With Good authority. Job. All right, Robert, see if you can tie it up. Nice job, David. Oh. That did not go in. All right, oh. one more time, Dave. A Roadhouse Grill gift certificate we are playing for. And David is still, and I was there, what's the official score? Dave is in the lead. Dave is in the lead, one nothing. We'll be right back and we'll talk more football hey, with hey. Robert Woods. Dave Jixter's wardrobe is provided by my stylist at Macy's. Welcome back to the Robert Wood Show. Dave Gibson from the Rock. Sarah O'Brien from The Edge. Of course, Robert Wood. Sarah, who won the uh, Gelber and Connell football toss? Well, big news. Dave has now been signed to the Bills. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and because of that, we're in the giving spirit this season. So everybody is getting a prize today. Everybody's getting a Roadhouse. <laughs> Speaking of giving, somebody gave me a cat. I got like a cat for Christmas. And uh, you can probably see her on the monitor. I know. That's not a cat. That's a kitten. Day a one. Day one at my house. <laughs> So she's adorable. <laughs> Robert, uh, listen, you were uh, on the team when Doug Marone quit, and now mm -hmm. you're on the team, obviously, uh, Rex Ryan um, gets fired. What, what hurt more for the team? Was a coach quitting or a coach getting fired? Uh, probably more so uh, coach, coach getting fired. You know, we, we've been up and down with Rex, uh, wins and losses, uh, trying to win out for him. And uh, we know he, he gives us all, he competes. And um, I would say that would definitely be tougher, you know, uh, with Marone, Marone walking out on us, you know, guys are, are easy to let that go. You know, he, he's kind of quitting on us. Uh, you know, and Rex never, never quit on us. You're in Jersey to take on the Jets. Keys to the winning that game. Uh, go out there and, and play. Go out there and play Bills football. We need to go out there and, and play well on offense, run the ball well, and our defense needs to, you know, stop them and uh, put up some points and get out there with a win. Happy New Year, my good friend. Happy New Year. All right. Yeah. Hopefully, we're talking about a win next week. Happy yes, New Year. Happy New Year. 
Thanks for watching, everybody. We will be on next Monday, January 2nd at 7 p.m. The Robert Wood Show will continue next week. We'll see you then.